Hi, I'm Jacob Holiday with Homeschool Channel, and joining me today is Holly Dodson, a teacher over at Homeschool Campus. How are you doing today, Holly? I'm doing great, Jacob. How are you? Wonderful. Good to be here. Good to be back. You know, there's a lot that's going on in terms of education today, and a lot of people are starting to look at different options, especially with the pandemic, um, either resurging right now or coming to a close. It's it's hard to tell ever since it started. Everything's been kind of wonky for me. But what we want to talk about today is homeschooling as an alternative for a lot of people. But before we do that, I want to do a little bit of a compare contrast because I know that you were a public school teacher. So why don't you tell me just a little bit about your public school um, experience, and then we could kind of dive into the homeschooling a little bit. Absolutely. So I taught public school for about seven years um, in Orange County. Um, I taught first grade the whole time and I loved it. Um, once my daughters were born, I wanted to stay home with them. So I segued into private tutoring and was teaching all grade levels, um, you know, privately, and then eventually started homeschooling my own kids. So I've been out of the public school sector now for 25 years. Wow. So, I mean, first of all, thank you for, for actually taking the initiative to be a teacher. I'm, I'm someone who's always loved learning. So, you know, having people like you in our lives is, is fantastic because you you help us grow um, academically and so many other ways as well. So first and foremost, thank you. Um, also, thank you for going into homeschooling. Um, it's something that I, you know, I was in a public or private school when I was younger, but only until about the second grade. Mm -hmm. So that didn't last too long. But in terms of the homeschooling aspect, why did you kind of shift gears from public schools after being in it for so long to then have your children be homeschooled? Yeah, that's a great question. And I kind of fell into it accidentally. It's not something I ever planned. Um, one of the things I thought, you know, that would happen is once my own kids got into school, I would go back to public school teaching and, you know, our schedules would mesh. But um, as a public school teacher, I saw that as great as it is in many ways, it's also kind of one size fits all. Um, just by necessity, I had 32, sometimes 34 first graders in my class, and they would be at all levels from uh, kids who didn't know the alphabet to kids who were already reading at a second, third grade level. And it was really difficult to meet everyone's needs as one teacher, you know, and 30 something kids. Um, in addition to that, I felt like so much of my job was classroom management, you know, with that many kids, <laughs> five and six year olds. Um, I used to joke that I spent half the year just trying to civilize them <laughs> and teach them how to sit still. Um, and it took away from what I loved, which was the actual teaching. So when it came time to send my older daughter to kindergarten, um, she was already reading. She was reading chapter books. And I knew that she was going to go to kindergarten and be taught the alphabet. And I just didn't see that being a good fit for her. And I had a friend who was kind of exploring homeschooling. And so I followed in her footsteps and we explored it together. And I loved that it offered an opportunity to meet her where she was and, um, really make her curriculum specific to her. So I kind of thought I'll take it year by year, you know, in a year or two, she may be ready to hop into public school. And one year led to another, led to another. And I stayed with homeschooling. They chose to go to, to public high school and were very successful with that as well. So, um, you know, I think it was, it turned out to be a great decision. It was scary. Even as a teacher, I, I worried I was going to somehow ruin them by, by homeschooling them. So it was a relief to find out they turned out to be great human beings. <laughs> yeah, well, that is that is great to hear. And it is definitely a terrifying feeling. I know it was for me, you know, being homeschooled initially because I was getting removed from this environment that I knew very well that a lot of my family were in. My grandparents owned a church, and that's where we went to the school it was also a private school and all my family was there. And then we just left and it was just, you know, start from ground zero. So 
it, it definitely is terrifying. I, I hope I turned out okay. <laughs> I, I think I did. I think I did, but I guess it's really up to the opinions of others. <laughs> like one thing I kind of, that intrigued me with your answer is that you said that a lot of your classroom time was spent kind of mitigating the children's behavior and kind of like, I forget the word that you used, but just making sure that they weren't too rowdy. And, right. and, you know, that makes sense, of course, because they're kids and you're teaching them at a very young age. And I think even through high school, you know, kids are the same, same sort of way where they want to get up and they want to do stuff. What I really enjoyed about homeschooling was that it was very similar to a college schedule when I got into college where I would do two days of class or three. And then the rest of the time, it was up to me to do my homework, to work, to go play tennis, whatever it was. And so I think that really helped as far as the classroom environment goes in, in, in terms of kind of quelling everyone's uh, attitude and nerves or whatever it may be that's causing them to act up because you're not, it's not an overload and you still have a lot of time to get out and explore or do extracurricular activities or whatever it is. Do you find that it's kind of similar in your classroom environment now that you are teaching at homeschool campus? Well, I think with my own daughters, um, they loved that aspect of it as well. Um, they liked to get up early, get the day started at eight in the morning or before. Sometimes they would have contests to see who could get up earlier and finish their schoolwork quicker. Um, but they had the freedom to choose. Did they want to get up early and, and do the work? Did they want to do a full day's worth of work, like you were saying, a couple days a week and then have time to do other things? And it opened up so much time for them to take horseback riding lessons, take art classes, um, take piano, um, do Girl Scouts. There was no shortage of social activity and extracurricular learning. Um, one of my daughters became a very serious dancer and the other became a singer and she did competitions in uh, Tennessee. So it was just, it was something that we would not have had time for, I don't think, if they had not been able to have that flexibility. And yet they also learned to work very independently. And when they went to high school, it, public high school, it was just like, this is, this is so easy. And, and they spend so much time on everything. And, and they ended up taking so many AP and IB classes that when they both went to um, UC schools, one graduated in three and a half years from Berkeley and the other in two and a half years from UC Santa Barbara because they had accumulated so many units in high school toward college. So it, it just, everything about it clicked for us and for them. And they, you know, they wouldn't have changed the way they did it. And I, I think the, the best thing is that there's so many options, you know, you can do homeschooling for a few years, you can do homeschooling through your entire school career. You can come and go. I mean, I've seen students who started and then they go out and try something else and come back. And there's just such a, a plethora of options now, especially. I wish there'd been a homeschool campus when my kids were homeschooling. We didn't have that. Um, but I think it's it just offers more choice. Yeah, it, it, it definitely does. And I see that's why a lot of the kids um, who were in the program back when I was in it, that's why they were in it, myself included. What's so great about homeschooling is you get the education um, that's more tailored for you. But in addition to that, you have all this free time. And, you know, back to what I was saying, when you get really anxious and or nervous or whatever it is that you're feeling in the classroom and you want to act out or you get like a little AD, ADD and you start like straying away, it's much easier if you're homeschooled, in my opinion, for you to focus in because it's not a sensory overload right? Yeah. It's not monotonous. You have it just enough to where it's in that sweet spot. And then you get to do everything else that you need to do. And it's, it's funny to me. Um, yeah, I've shouted at public schools and I know that there is a great aspect in terms of, you know, covering subjects very easily or very broadly and spending a lot of time on it. That's very good. It's great. It's fantastic. But the problem with it is, you know, sometimes if you've, if you've already got it, or, you know, you're just ready to move on to the next thing, or you'd like to do something else. It's not there. So right. it's, it's great because they've done a really good job, I think, in creating a mold that fits most people within it. But right. there's some people that probably would do better without it. So that's the thing that's so fantastic about homeschooling.
Yes. If your student learns differently, you know, whether they're ahead or behind or, you know, in my daughter's cases, they were very advanced in language arts, but they didn't really love math. And so, you know, the, the, that part came easy, the reading, the writing for them. But, you know, I had to be on them, do, do the math. And I made them do math all summer because I wanted them to even out. But I tailored that to what, you know, their strengths and weaknesses were. And, and I think that that's the beauty of homeschool, in addition to learning, you know, the independence and having all of the um, different options available. So, yeah, I think that tailoring it to fit a specific student and different types of learning is so advantageous. Definitely. Uh, the tailored, the tailored learning experience, I think is my favorite part about uh, my past experiences. You know, I've often thought, Oh, I wonder what it would be like if I were to go to public school, but in, in all honesty, I wouldn't be able to trade it in for the education I got because of not only what I learned, which was fantastic. And, you know, luckily I was given a good enough education to where, you know, state test results were, um, you know, it proved that I was getting a good education. I scored well on them, but I had time for all these other activities. And, you know, that's another thing too, that I think a lot of parents are scared about in terms of educating their children. They're like, well, how am I going to compare them to a public school students? How am I going to know that they're actually getting that good education? Right. A lot of parents don't know about, and, and you are, you're a vendor yourself, is that you can actually become as a teacher, you become a vendor for a charter school, and then the state will give you money that would normally be allocated for your child towards public education. And then in return for getting that money, you have to get physically tested, um, nothing weird, it's just running PE stuff. But then you also have to do uh, academic tests as well once a year, um, which is, you know, which is fantastic, because I think that it's a happy medium where you get this tailored learning experience but you don't have to feel like you're completely missing out on what most of society is doing, right? You get to grow along with them just at a different pace and pursuing different interests sometimes because you have the time for it. Sure. And those tests provide feedback for the parents, you know, like they go, okay, well, you know, these scores are high. These are a little bit lower. I'm going to focus more on these lower scores. And I think too, you know, with with public school, you've got to follow a schedule and you're trying to mostly meet the students in the middle. Um, so like you were saying, if you're um, advanced in a particular subject and getting bored, you're going to get antsy, you're going to misbehave. If you're not understanding it and that it's just moving too quickly, you're lost and you're frustrated and you're going to misbehave. So yeah, there's all of that frustration that can come, you know, when you're just trying to follow a cookie cutter curriculum. And for me, like the reason that I wish that there had been a homeschool campus when when I was teaching my girls is I was better at teaching certain things. I'm a language arts person for the most part. I love to teach literature. I love to teach writing. Um, that came easily for my girls, probably because it was such a part of, you know, our home environment from the time they were tiny. I would have loved to have been able to send them to homeschool campus to learn science, which was not my thing, you know, go to an expert who can um, take that off my plate so that I can enjoy teaching the things that I like to teach, enjoy spending that um, after school time, you know, with the girls or my kids doing fun things, field trips. We did tons of field trips, educational field trips and fun field trips, um, but take off the science or the the advanced math off my plate and give it to an expert who can guide them in a way that I could feel like, all right, they're getting what I can't provide. And so it's like this, this, like you said, a sweet spot, you know, mom provides what she can provide. And, and then you, you uh, hire it out to somebody that knows more, what more than what, you know, Absolutely. In a particular yeah, yeah, definitely. What's, what's fantastic about that model is that you as the parent actually have a lot more control and say over the direction that you'd like your children to go in. Um, I mean, the right. fact that your one daughter graduated in two and a half years from UCSB, that's nuts. Like I almost, I almost jumped out of my chair when I heard that. I was like, wow, <laughs> that, that's pretty crazy. Yes. I didn't she always even... had, to... <laughs> I didn't, sorry, even... she always had to one up her sister. So like her older sister would uh, like do something amazing. And then the younger one had to do that's, just that much, you know, you know. I'm, I'm the oldest and you know, that's, that's that's super true you know I was a we're all musicians in my family but 
there was a point in time when pretty much everyone stopped playing except for my sister mm-hmm. and uh, getting my hands on an electric guitar and playing. And my brother who started playing many years after me has surpassed me by miles. You know, that's just how it goes. You know, I, it's I, funny because yeah. as the oldest, you're kind of used to, to leading the pack, even though sometimes they're ahead of you. So it's a bit oh. strange, you know, it's, you it's set you the almost, pace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, it's like you set the pace, but uh, you know, while, while you're kind of clearing the brush, they're like building cars, you know, and then they yes. pass you and you're like, Hey, wait, a, you know, what about me? You know, I didn't know this is a competition, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of funny in, in that respect, but something about another thing about homeschooling that I found incredibly important is, and, the, and it's, it's the older I get in life, the more I, I'm realizing that both reading and writing are extremely valuable assets to have in your own personal arsenal. They're very important, but something that's not really talked about, um, even though we all know about it is speech, being able to speak well, being able to speak eloquently, being able to say what you have on your mind in a very effective way. And it's essentially, it's just writing just in oral form, Mm. very similar. And a lot of parents are afraid of that socialization aspect. They're either afraid that, oh, I don't want my children to get socialized this way in a public school, or they might say, well, if I go to homeschooling, problem is they won't get socialized at all. So they're stuck kind of choosing between the lesser of two evils. And you know, it's a real problem. So I want to know what your take is on that in terms of both public school and homeschooling, that socialization aspect. That's It's such an interesting, hot topic, because that is something that so many parents are like, well, what about socialization? And and I would just kind of laugh because my kids were doing so much socializing. Um, as I said, they took they dabbled in so many different classes every day after school. It was something, you know, whether it was art or music and some they stuck with and some they didn't, but in all of those uh, after school programs that they tried, there were other kids. So they were getting plenty of, of socialization with their peers. Um, The one interesting thing that I've found with a lot of homeschoolers is because they're surrounded by adults a lot in their day-to-day life, um, more so than you know, kids in school, is that many of them early on become comfortable speaking to adults in in ways that kids in public school don't necessarily. And my my girls I know were very comfortable speaking with adults and and um, socializing with adults. They didn't have that. I don't know if it's a fear or I'm not exactly sure what it was, but they just had this comfort level with with adults that served them really well once they then got into high school and college and, you know, now into their careers. So I I feel like that's an advantage. And as far as socializing with kids, there are so many opportunities, even in my live online classes, we will often do little breakout rooms and I'll give them a topic like you know, talk to the kids in your breakout room and find one thing all three of you have in common or all four of you have in common. So they're talking to their peers and the feedback I've gotten from students is that that's one of their favorite things. It's like sort of separate from the class, but they're having an opportunity to get to know those kids. And then I'll hear them when I'll pop into the breakout room, they're exchanging phone numbers and they're plan- making plans to get together. So even in an online environment, um, the kids are kids just naturally gravitate to friendship. It's so much easier. So they, they're making friends even in an online class, which I thought was really surprising and cool. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a very good point that you bring up. First and foremost, I can say that the first is true when you're talking about your children and how they're more comfortable with adults. That's definitely true in my life. I gravitated much quicker towards um, Mm -hmm. adult and an adult conversation that I would um, a conversation with one of my peers, which, you know, has its pros and cons, because in all honesty, there was a little bit of a disconnect at first. And it wasn't until I got a little older, you know, it's it's funny, because it's just switched around, really, you know, that's what parents, I think they they miss. It's, look, if, if you're homeschooled, you're just going to kind of develop a little bit of a sophistication, probably first, but like casual conversation and talk with peers is a little harder. Whereas public schools, I think it's the reverse. So that's yeah. that's the first thing, um, you know, but also what's fantastic about homeschooling is when you're in that classroom environment, 
there's going to be other kids there. And like you said, they're just, they're just going to socialize. That's what we do as not just at, when we're younger, but as people we, you know, we're social, social creatures, we have to get out and talk. It's one of the great advantages of our species that we're able to do very effectively. No other animal on the planet can communicate in complex language like we do. You know, we have it for a reason and we are going to use it, you know, and sometimes though, you do have those children in the classrooms where they're a little nervous, they're, they're a little quiet. And what's great about it is in homeschooling and the same thing happened in college, though in college it was tougher because they'd been doing it their whole life, but in homeschooling it's easier because they're younger. What ends up happening is the classroom environment's just a little bit smaller. So it's a lot easier for them to get up and talk. Also, the community is smaller, so they get much more comfortable with people quicker. It's much easier to get to know people. Everyone knows everyone. So once you're in that environment, you're very quickly included within it, whether you want to or not, which ultimately is more of a good thing than it is a bad thing in all honesty. So sure. yeah, kids are going to socialize, but when you have that you know, scared or timid child, they're going to get up and speak. And then, you know, if you have someone like me who just, I won't stop talking, you know, <laughs> I was in that environment and I had to learn, okay, taper it down. Let me hear someone else's opinion. But also too, once people start getting more comfortable, someone like me is going to start receiving more criticism because they're more comfortable critiquing me, which only mm -hmm. serves to sharpen my stick, you know? So it's, it's a win for everyone. And it's fantastic. I mean, I remember this, this one story, I was in a debate class and uh, this one girl was petrified and her mom like f had to push her into the classroom to take it. And she was petrified and she gave her first speech and she passed out. She, oh. she was giving her first speech like three seconds in, she just froze and her back slammed up against the backboard and she just crumpled to the ground. By the end of the class, she had won first place in a very prestigious debate tournament. You know, oh, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so cool to just see that growth. And it's so inspiring. And, you know, it's like, I'm someone who likes to talk like all the time. And I didn't do that. So when you see something like that and someone from your community, this really tight knit circle, it's amazing. So I think, yeah, there are definitely some challenges with homeschooling in terms of socialization. It's not a perfect system, but really the rules are just reversed and you're in a tight knit community where you can communicate. Plus, if you do the extracurricular activities like I did, like your daughters did, what ends up happening is you're going to get that socialization with other kids as well outside of that circle. So it all works out. And, you know, one thing that was interesting to me when I first started teaching at homeschool campus, this is like my sixth year, I think. And I started out in person um, and all my, all of my classes are multi-age level. So I'll have, you know, fourth graders in the same class as sixth graders. And, and I wasn't totally sure how that was going to work out. And, the thing that struck me from day one at when I was in person and has continued through all of these years is that this particular community overall has just really nice kids. And they, the older kids are not uh, mean to the younger ones, that nobody's laughing at people's mistakes. They're just a kind group. And I think that that speaks volumes for um, homeschooling. You know, these are kids who have learned to be kind and um, nice to, to kids of all ages. And so these multi-age classrooms that I was kind of like, all right, is this going to be tough? Are people going to feel uncomfortable? Is the sixth grader that's in a class with a third grader going to feel, you know, like he shouldn't be there? And that just hasn't happened. And that's continued with online as well. And I just... I, when I first started teaching with homeschool campus, I would tell people, you know, that these kids are just so nice. And even middle school, which has a reputation for being a rough, you know, age to teach, that's become one of my favorite groups of kids. They're, they're, they're old enough to have their own ideas and, you know, have these great conversations, but nobody's demeaning to each other. And I don't think I've ever seen that kind of cooperation in just a regular classroom so that that's something that really has stood out to me that, that the kids are nice they've learned to be nice so that that's huge yeah it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because you know I never looked at it that way but you're you're absolutely right it's very because of the tight-knit community it's very trust oriented so people mm -hmm. don't really go around and and you know talk behind each other's backs or demean each other it's very helpful um 
it, it's funny too, because I think like in public schools, because of how much larger it is, you can have all these social circles or cliques or what they call them. And you could kind of dart in and out and like poke fun at someone in another one and then kind of retreat back to your own. But in the homeschool environment, you just can't do that. The right. reason why you can't do that is because it's just one circle. That's just it. Yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. You're going to have your friends that you prefer to hang out with instead of the others, but it's very, very, very tight knit. So mm-hmm. it builds, it builds this trust. And what's great too about it is, you know, no one's perfect. You know, I've had opportunities where, or, or not opportunities, but moments where I might've been demeaning in a classroom environment, you know, and other people were demeaning to me, but you know, if you, if you're in those larger social circles and all these separate ones, you can kind of do that and you can kind of run away and almost make a mockery off to the side of, you know, whoever you're making fun of, but in homeschooling, you can't do that because it's all just one circle. So, you know, if you do go do that, you can't run away anywhere. So now you're stuck there having, you know, having to face, you know, whatever it is you said that might've offended someone and you had to go, Ooh, you know, that doesn't feel too good to make someone feel that bad, you know, and you could see it on their face. And then all of a sudden now you're a better person because of it. So it's a very empathetic um, group. And I've, it's, I'm really glad I had this talk because I never actually looked at it that way. So yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely right. You're absolutely right about that. You know, and, and middle schoolers too, it's funny because they can be very rowdy, but once you kind of sit them down in the right environment, they're incredibly socialized. They're very yeah. smart and they, they know exactly what they want. And, and that's like the pivotal transition point when they're just starting to become adults, you know, they're right. just starting to sprout. So it's really interesting to see, um, you know, kids. I, I remember I, I was teaching kids in middle school uh, tennis lessons. And I've seen a few of them like older now in the summer, just kind of out and about. And, and they go from like these little kids to like all these young adults. And it's just funny to watch and funny to see. But yeah, I mean, the whole the whole program, kids are actually very socialized. They just do it in a different way in which yes. which is not traditional. So it's a very good point to bring up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think that we discussed quite a lot. I think our viewers back at home wherever they're going to be viewing this are going to really enjoy the conversation. So first and foremost, thank you so much for coming on. It was a great conversation. And also thank you to all the viewers for coming and watching this. Homeschooling was something that I really enjoyed and loved. It was right for me. It was good for me. It was good for a lot of my friends that I'm friends with today. And even people like Holly, who's a teacher at homeschool campus, have has chosen to interview her children and Hey, look at look at what happened to one of them. Both of them went to UC mm-hmm. schools. One of them graduated two and a half years early. So, or sorry, one and a half years early. They went to school <laughs> two and a half years. So math wasn't my strongest subject either. But <laughs> you know, I, I, I think well, I love other areas. Yes, thank you so much. It was great, great talking to you. And it is interesting to like hear the perspective of a recent student, you know, as well. So I I love homeschooling. I'm so happy it exists. And I, you know, highly recommend it if it's something that, you know, fits your student. <laughs> Definitely worked out for me. I can okay. recommend it. 